The history of humanity is a tale of perseverance, cooperation, and invention. From living on the same planet as many other human species, simply as hunter-gatherers attempting to withstand the elements, to inventing rockets, developing the internet, and now having our sights on Mars. Compared to what our forefathers could have ever envisioned, we have done a lot more for ourselves. Although we now rule modern life on Earth, this hasn't always been the case. What brought us here then? What is our narrative? Our tale starts with the emergence of our species, Homo sapiens, about 200,000 years ago. At this period, a number of different human species or hominids lived on the same planet as us. The first species of the Homo genus, which developed about 2.5 million years ago, is generally accepted as our common ancestor. These hominids' DNA indicates that they interbred occasionally and may have traveled together. Unfortunately, we have been the only human species to inhabit this planet for the past 15,000 years. Which begs the question, what happened to the rest of us? Some theories blame their extinction on abrupt climatic shifts, while others favor a more violent interpretation supported by mass graves and fractured skulls discovered at archaeological sites. Another explanation is that we all interbred to form one species, not that they actually went extinct in the first place. Humans were considered bipedal apes, with no greater ecological significance than other animals for many millennia, just another component of the food web and a stop in the cycle of life. And what changed? What made us the only species known to have successfully migrated, adapted to a wide range of habitats on our globe, radically altered the climate of the entire world, and even ventured into space? This change didn't occur overnight. It took hundreds of thousands of years. And we'll never know for sure what exactly happened. However, there are a few significant prehistoric sites that stand out above all others. According to most historians, primates wandering the prehistoric African savanna have never walked on two feet before. Although it did allow early hominids to use their arms for various purposes, it did not provide them with a decisive advantage over other species in their habitat for millions of years. But the use of fire permanently altered our position in the food chain. This is why many people believe the man-made fire was man's greatest discovery. Or was it an invention? Around 1.5 million years ago, the earliest evidence of human interaction with one of nature's most devastating forces was discovered. To begin with, we kept fires that occurred naturally burning by adding fuel to them. It would take us another million years to learn how to light flames on our own, which made it possible for us to utilize fires frequently. And after we discovered it, it was used for a variety of reasons. Hominid species found great utility in their ability to control fire. We used it to keep warm when it got chilly, to provide light when the sky became dark, to keep predators and insects at bay, and best of all, cook our food. As a result of cooking food, according to anthropologist Richard Ranghans, cooking hypothesis, human bodies use less energy for digestion, freeing up more energy for the brain's various activities. This, according to Rangham, is what ultimately sparked the emergence of sophisticated language. However, according to the Israel scientist Noah Harari, it wasn't just our ferocious nature that distinguished Homo sapiens from other species. The cognitive revolution, in his opinion, was something different. Our ability to communicate complicated information helped us establish the potential for extensive collaboration around 70,000 years ago. Numerous species interact with one another, when there is a threat or when they want to mate. However, Homo sapiens began communicating to one another about other tribe members and shared fictions like spirits, which allowed even total strangers to interact successfully. Who would have guessed that our greatest asset would turn out to be gossiping? Even today, our trust in social constructs like human rights, the worth of money, and the rule of law is essential to how our communities function. Such belief systems linked millions of people together. Homo sapiens were able to leave Africa and travel to Europe and Asia before eventually arriving in Australia and America due to the development of complex language. Uncertain environmental factors such as harsh droughts and a lack of food probably drove them to embark on this journey far from home. However, their migration was anything but calm. It resulted in the extinction of several endemic megnafauna due to hunting and resource competition. Then something amazing occurred around 12,000. Humans made the decision to begin cultivating plants and breeding animals for food, which is thought to have happened concurrently in many different places around the world, transforming us from nomads to settlers, from hunters to gatherers to farmers. Now we may have careers, soldiers, and crafters. These little villages eventually developed into towns, and those towns eventually became empires, frequently bound together by shared religious myths. As a result, culture, traditions, and possibly most significantly, written text developed. 
The oldest written document that we have so far found were found in Egypt and are thought to be 5,000 years old. It's believed that the Mesopotamian and ancient Egyptian civilizations served as the foundation for modern civilization. While widespread human cooperation based on shared beliefs has resulted in some of our greatest accomplishment, it has also had awful side effects, including war, genocide, and slavery. Why does this unmatched ability to work as a team have such destructive power? The ability to separate, or to put it another way, to unite against is the flip side of our culture's potential for unity. Although resource competition is a natural occurrence, it's never been as well organized and brutal as it is today. The desire for the murder of groups of people with opposing beliefs or different identities developed into a powerful enough motivator. For example, the belief in deity, the divinity of a ruler or national superiority. According to English philosopher Thomas Hobbes, humans are inherently self-interested and competitive. This is challenged by Genevan philosopher Rao Ziu, who claims that because we are not physiologically adapted to live in so many different social groups, highly developed civilization necessarily produce excessive inequality and social division and ultimately fail. He contends that political and social structures, which encourage selfish wants, that would have been restrained by more intimate, primitive societies of hunters and gatherers, corrupt our good nature. Regardless, the complex network of relationships between people that make up modern civilization is unrecognizable and unquestionably more complicated than the way our genetically identical prehistoric ancestors managed to organize themselves. And this has caused problems that are out of control. When we consider contemporary history, the scientific revolution really shines out. This method of rigorous experimentation, which had its beginnings in Europe, fundamentally altered how we understood the cosmos, the Earth, and ourselves. Superstitions were replaced by empirical data as our framework for understanding the world. Religious ideas were supplemented by a thirst for reason to advance humankind during the 18th century, commonly known as the Age of Enlightenment. The era gave rise to a revelation of our connections with nature along with the torrent of groundbreaking discoveries and technologies. This is best illustrated by René Descartes, a French philosopher, physicist, and mathematician who stated a few centuries ago that human advancement in many scientific domains might and should make us masters and possessors of nature. This paradigm shift led to the Industrial Revolution. This paradigm shift was accompanied by previously unimaginable technological advancements. Economic anthropologist Jason Hickel claims that an economic system that requires constant expansion was the main cause of this mass exploitation. He contends that in order for capitalism to flourish, self-sufficient subsistence economies had to be destroyed in addition to artificial scarcity and cheap labor being produced. The British Parliament proposed a number of laws between 1604 and 1914, known as the Enclosure Act, which, in fact, covered previously common land and turned it into private property. Kate Raworth, an Oxford economist, contends that a planetary system with finite resources make an economic system it depends on limitless growth and absolutely unattainable. Economic activity would double every 24 years if the world economy expands at the comparatively modest rate of 3% each year. Since GDP growth is correlated with material and energy consumption, it has a considerable impact on the planetary boundaries and climate change that the Industrial Revolution productivity has brought us. Raworth contends that this growth paradigm is not necessary to advance both human welfare and scientific knowledge. In her book, Donut Economics, she argues that strengthening the commons, or public services, effectively reversing, effectively reversing the privatization of recent centuries and reinterpreting the natural ecosystem and our place within it will give human life and nature a firmer platform on which to flourish. The history of humanity is one that is full of many amazing accomplishments. Since humanity first began to walk the earth thousands of years ago, our world will be absolutely unfathomable to our prehistoric predecessors. But we must be careful not to damage the same thing that gave us life and the chance to flourish in our search for expansion. Just as nature looked after us in the past, we must look after it today. Here's to the future of humanity. Let's hope it's one that the ancestor of humans would be pleased with.